All right, good morning, everybody. This is a, a wonderful, probably the last uh, spring day that we have before we bounce into summer here, but we're very excited to uh, announce Tampa's Neighborhoods um, Foundation Program. This is very, very exciting for the entire community. We are gonna look at improving water, wastewater, uh, stormwater, and transportation. And what we are going to do is focus on the neighborhoods that you can see up here. This is the starting of these capital improvement projects. We have East Tampa, uh, Forest Hills, McFarland Park and Virginia Park. And we will have projects going on in each of these. The beginning is going to be with the wastewater pipes. As many of you have heard, uh, I often say that Tampa is built on a strong foundation of safety and security. And that is our, our philosophy and our mission. But literal translation, Tampa is built on a strong foundation of infrastructure. And many of our water wastewater pipes are over 100 years old. The city of Tampa responds to water main breaks and wastewater breaks to the tune of multi-millions of dollars every single year, especially during the cold weather. The water pipes are, are pressurized. We get a, uh, some cold weather and then those pipes burst and we have to respond to that. So we're trying to be preventive in, the, in our approach of fixing a lot of these areas prior to uh, having to come out during an emergency. So first phase is gonna be the wastewater and that's actually fascinating. I'll take a little bit of Brad's thunder here, but they put a uh, lining in and put pressurized hot water that covers the entire pipe and then it, it, um, uh, it hardens in there and then go and cut out the links that go into the houses. So it's really fascinating uh, advanced method of putting new wastewater pipes in place without having to dig everything up. Uh, water pipes, not so much. We actually have to replace those because they are uh, pressurized. But we're gonna focus on these four neighborhoods first. And what it will do, it will improve the pressure, water pressure in the neighborhoods. And it will also uh, improve fire safety by providing the higher pressurized water. Now, clearly, we try to avoid all fire incidents through prevention, but we want to make sure that when a house or a structure catches on fire, that the, uh, the first responders are able to put that out very, very quickly. Transportation improvements, when we pull up some of these roadways, they're going to be replaced and repaved and improved. And there's one intersection that we'll be putting uh, a new light in as well. So Brad is gonna give all of the details on this particular program, where the uh, uh, first phases of it are gonna be, and then what the road closures, what the community can expect. And there will be a little bit of inconvenience. We can't make the improvements without closing down some of the roadways, but we do it in the least invasive way possible. So before I turn it over to uh, Brad, I wanna thank Jackson Heights Neighborhood Association for coming out and being such a strong supporter of the city here in the community. And the Jazzy Seniors, are in the shade back there and they have all promised to uh, teach me how to dance, which will probably be the most difficult assignment that they have ever taken on. So I will turn it over to Brad Beard and then we'll answer questions after that. Thank you guys. Oh, th thank you, Mayor. Um, it, this is exciting times because the uh, city council approved the pipes program back in uh, September of 2019. So uh, it's uh, taken over two years to get to this point to where we're getting ready to start doing con some construction. So we're pretty excited about it. Um, the, I, I wanna put uh, this project in context. The overall pipes program was almost a $3 billion uh, program and has currently 70 projects, some of which have been completed already, and uh, but the majority of them are either in the design or construction phase. So out of those 70 projects, this is one project out of all those projects. But this is kind of our cornerstone neighborhood project, if you will, where we can coordinate those four disciplines, um, transportation, stormwater, water, wastewater. 
So in, in each neighborhood, the sequence of work will, will be, for the most part, in this order. It'll start out with wastewater lining to take care of those uh, pipelines, water line replacement, then followed by stormwater, and then finally transportation to pave those streets uh, where we have uh, open cut excavation. But as the mayor mentioned, um, a lot a lot of uh, the work will be um, will not be invasive and include excavation. So this this first phase is uh, wastewater lining in two neighborhoods in uh, McFarland Park and then right here in East Tampa. Um, so uh, and then that will be followed by what's called pipe bursting with the water pipelines where we actually bore through the existing pipeline, break it apart, put in a new pipeline inside of it, and then that work will be in all four neighborhoods. And then the stormwater work will follow right behind that. And um, we'll start, uh, that work will start in Virginia Park where we have to um, rehabilitate a canal and uh, provide some additional capacity downstream. And then uh, we will have uh, stormwater nuisance uh, ponding correction in all four neighborhoods. Um, and then finally, uh, the transportation work and the one signal location uh, that the mayor mentioned is um, on McDill Avenue right at McFarland Park. So um, there will be some inconveniences, obviously, in construction, but we're, we're trying to minimize that as much as we can. When we do have inconveniences, we will accommodate uh, the residents and the businesses. Um, when we have one driveway blocked, um, and um, uh, that resident is disabled, we will be using golf carts uh, to transport them to and from their house. Um, and then where we have two driveways or two ingress and egress points for the businesses, we will only close one at a time. So um, some inconvenience with the noise and some dust during dry times, but the contractor is required to spray that dust with, with uh, water trucks to keep it down. So we're, we're going to try to work with uh, residents and businesses continuously throughout the project. Um, and then finally, uh, we will keep the community informed. You'll probably be hot, tired of hearing from us when we're finished, um, but we will have early and continuous outreach um, accurate timely updates, website updates, social media posts on a regular basis, um, announcements uh, through uh, to the affected neighborhoods using Nextdoor, um, then uh, construction updates through a city's newsletter, um, virtual presentations uh, to the community and, and civic organizations, news releases to the local media, and then finally, um, we will have dedicated ombudsmen for each neighborhood. So there will be someone with a blue hard hat that resident can go right to and get their, an get their questions answered. Um, and uh, with that, I probably left out a whole bunch of stuff, so uh, <laughs> uh, we'll open it up for questions. Yeah, the, the main difference is we're coordinating those four disciplines, whereas some of those other pipes projects will be a water only or a wastewater only. In this case, we don't want to tear up the street twice, right? So we're coordinating um, stormwater, transportation, water and wastewater, um, you know, in, in this project. And that was, that was the idea from the beginning. When the mayor and I went out to the neighborhoods in August of 2019, we made that commitment, and um, and that's what we're going to keep. Yes, ma'am.
Yeah, I'll take the second one first. We will absolutely be coordinating with the, the with the CRA to make sure that happens. Um, the, um, great question because I didn't hit on that on uh, how we prioritize these four neighborhoods. Basically, these four neighborhoods had um, the most cumulative needs of all those four areas, and um, we have. Uh, completed master plans in uh, specifically in water and wastewater and um, have overall plans for stormwater that was done as part of the stormwater improvement assessment back in 2016 and then um, transportation we did a lot of that planning work uh, in preparation for the all for transportation surtax so we pulled all those plans together and it was quite an effort by our chief engineers and their teams um, to coordinate what was the best, which neighborhoods had the most needs, and that's how we ended up with, with these four neighborhoods. And kind of drilling down a little bit more in the East Tampa square. Um, <laughs> so we have all Right, okay, so we, um, for East Tampa in particular, and let's talk about this first phase, which is the wastewater pipeline lining. Um, we uh, have worked out a sequence of work based on the needs, which ones are the worst of the worst that we need to line first, and that is uh, part of the plan and will be included on the map uh, on the website uh, where we, you can go and see which ones have been prioritized to move out first. Tell them how you find how putting the cameras down and how you yeah. determine which are the worst. So we um, we clean and televise uh, our wastewater system on uh, every five years, um, and including we've started to look at the laterals as well, uh, and we so we put a TV camera down in each pipeline. Um, we're out there doing that every day. We have 11 crews that do that, and they um, will prioritize those pipelines based on the condition. If there's a cave-in that they come across, we'll make a point repair uh, within the next couple of weeks, and then we'll come back and line the entire pipeline. But uh, it, it's, we stay on top of those pipelines because, as you know, a cave-in, it can start with a, as a small dimple in the road, and it can end up big enough to swallow a car. So we, uh, we try to stay on top of that as much as we can. Um, in fact, we've increased our frequency um, with implementation of, of pipes. We were able to get from seven years to down to five years, and actually we're under five years at this point. Do you want people living in those neighborhoods to know as far as expectations? Like, you said, I read that this is going to be about a three-year project, and you said it's not going to go four years before it's going to be torn out. So what do you think about that? Yes, the project will be done in phases. So when... when um, the crews are on your street, you know, it, it's not going to be three years on any one street, obviously. It's, it's going to be rolled out in terms of what's the highest priority to fix and in, in that sequence. So when they're doing, let's say we're doing lining on your street for a wastewater pipeline and rehabilitating or replacing two of the manholes, there, there will be some ex, excavation associated with manhole replacement, but the Pipe, the wastewater lining will uh, be non-intrusive, and so they uh, will see a truck, um, you know, putting the lining in, and then uh, curing it, as the mayor said earlier, uh, with hot water, and then uh, they'll be gone the next day, and then uh, we'll follow up with excavation of those two manholes at those locations. There will be flagmen and um, to. Uh, move the traffic around those locations and uh, in some cases we will have to close the street and then we will make accommodations to get those residents and businesses in and out. So um, that's kind of one example um, and then with the pipe bursting same thing it's non-intrusive so there'll just be an entrance point and an exit point for that pipeline and um, the people in between will not be impacted by that work. 
But then if we have a storm water line that we're putting in or water line replacement the whole way with open cut um, excavation, that's when they will be impacted driveway by driveway. And they could have their driveway shut down for a whole day where we would need to make accommodations to either have them walk or take a golf cart from uh, where they can park down the street to their house. And then, uh, like I mentioned earlier, there'll be some noise and, and some dust. Um, we're going to try to keep that to a minimum. So that's kind of what to expect in the construction. Did that answer your question? It depends on what we're doing uh, on each roadway. So when you go on the website, you'll be able to see um, if a road has all four disciplines included, they will be impacted considerably longer. Um, and we will try to have um, like six week look aheads as to uh, what construction is done, is, is being accomplished and how long it will take um, road by road. And you, we have a key on those maps that shows, you know, whether this one road includes um, no wastewater, but it includes water and storm water and um, minimal transportation and then, you know, and so forth. So not every road has all four disciplines and some only have one that are being uh, corrected or improved. Yeah. Could you, could you repeat that, Charlie? <laughs> Oh, this, um, this first uh, guaranteed maximum price is uh, for wastewater lining is about $21 million, and uh, we are shooting to have that approved by City Council in May. Oh, there, there is no federal money uh, for uh, this project. Uh, there may be some uh, Swift Mud grant money for the stormwater portion, but none yet. Yes, it does. It does. All of it. 100% is from the pipes program that was approved in September 2019. Yeah, and you're, you're speaking of other projects that may be uh, of larger scale on that street. And um, I would say that um, construction is and can be an inconvenience, especially for the larger projects. Um, please uh, be patient. It will be worth it in the end. All right. Is that, All right. You want to take any? All right, listen, we're going to make this as least invasive as possible. It's uh, projects that are improving our infrastructure that are way, way overdue. And so we know there'll be a little bit of inconvenience, but we will keep everyone up to the minute updated on what's going on. And this planned ahead programs take much less time than they do when there's an emergency. And so, you know, we try to make it as least invasive as we possibly can and keep everyone up to date on the, the progress of each and every one of these projects. Thank you guys.